So dismissing some of your failures, making excuses for them while taking your successes to heart, that's one pathway uh, to the self-deception we're talking about. But there are a couple of other ways that we can sustain positive illusions. Um, one of these is selective criticism. Now, if people get a test, a school test or a medical test or whatever, if the news is good, they don't question it further. They go, okay, that's great, it's a good sign, I knew it. If the news is bad, they go, oh, wait a minute, there must be something wrong with the test. It might not be a valid test. They become critical and skeptical. You see this in politics too. A uh, study comes out and the findings are congenial to your views, regardless of whether you're liberal, conservative, whatever, uh, and you say, yeah, look, that's evidence, that shows what I believe. Uh, meanwhile, if a study comes out for the other side, goes against your views, you'll go, oh, I bet they did the study wrong, there's something biased or something like that. So selective criticism enables you to weed out information you don't like and thus build your self-esteem uh, on a positive view. Memory bias is another way we fool ourselves. Memory bias occurs when people forget bad things. They remember good things much better. Partly they rehearse and they dwell on the good things, think of them over and over. Bad things, they might dwell on them for a little bit, but they're usually trying to think of, of some way to explain them away, sort of uh, rehearsing some way to deal with it. And then they, they file it away and don't think about it as much. So in general, there's a tendency that lots of times when you think the news is going to be bad, you sort of put your defenses up. You don't pay as much attention. Uh, you get a report on your personality or something that says you're a marvelous person and you might really study it in detail and read it and think about it and memorize it and imagine sharing it with your friends or telling your mother on this. But you get the same report from the same source, only it says oh, you're a loser and a failure. You probably don't even read the whole thing. You say, oh, and you sort of skim it. You don't study it. You don't you talk about it with your mother, you don't memorize it. It's a bit like getting spam in your email. You can't really not see this, the spam at all, uh, but you don't have to read the whole thing. You just look at it, you can tell right away this is spam, and then you delete it. And that's a good analogy for how the mind deals with a lot of criticism or feedback uh, that people don't like about themselves. It's not the way Freud thought, that you repress it in the sense you push the thought into the unconscious, it, it is then gone into this dungeon of unwanted thoughts. No, it came through your conscious mind, uh, but if you don't think about it very much, you just say, oh well, and you move on, and then it doesn't create as much of a trace in memory, it isn't connected to many other things, so it doesn't come back uh, as many times.